Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Homer Simpson statue. He's going to end up looking a lot of something like this. Look at Homer doing a nice little 360 for us. Doesn't he look fantastic? If you want to make him, here's what you're going to need. You will need some cyan stained clay and some light grey clay. Also grab some black wool, some dark grey wool, light grey, white, cyan, light blue and finally grab yourself some yellow wool and luckily for us those are the only materials that we're going to be needing so once you have those and once you've figured out what you want to make them i'll be making them right here you're going to want to kick off your homer statue with this sequence of blocks in a row on the floor do three cyan clay one two three then two dark gray then three cyan clay to give you the base row of your Homer statue and that's exactly what it wants to look like. So once you've got that first row taken care of, this is what you want to do for row number two. Just copy the first row. So for the second row, just copy exactly what you had for the first row. Very easy. For row number three, do two cyan in the two center spots of the row and then do light blue everywhere else. For the next row, do an entire row of cyan wool. For the next six rows, place two cyan in the two center spots of the row, and then do light blue everywhere else. And as I said, you want to have that for six rows, so that's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I always like to count out the rows first, I don't want to miss any out, and I don't want to add too many, so that's why I always like to count them out with everything, so... I'm just going to continue placing the blue and once you have your six rows of two cyan and everywhere else light blue you then for the next four rows want to do four solid rows of light blue wool so that's one two three four so one two three and four and I've just realized guys Whilst we've been placing those four light blue rows, something that might help us out a little bit later on, if you take out your yellow wool and in line with this second row of light blue that we've just placed, if you just take each end of that row of light blue wool and you just extend it out by four either side with your yellow wool, it might just help you out a little bit later on because that's where the arms are going to go. We're not going to build them now because, well, I have a process and I'm a little OCD, so we're going to finish off the torso, then we'll do the arms, but that'll help us a little later on. Once you've got your four rows of light blue and your two rows of four yellow placed, you then for the next six rows want to do six solid rows of white wool, so that's one two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, and six. As easy as that. Six rows of white wool. For the next row, and you know what, this is where things get complicated. Not complicated whatsoever. For the next row, starting from the left hand side, do this sequence of blocks. Do one white wool, one light grey, one white wool, two yellow, one white, one light grey, one white wool. For the next row, starting from the left hand side again, do one light grey, one white wool, four yellow wool, one white wool, one light grey. For the next row, place a single white wool on the ends of the row and then fill everywhere else in between in with light grey clay. And what you want to end up with in its entirety is something that should look exactly like this. Very, very simple indeed. So once you've reached this point right here, all we have to do to complete the front of our statue is finish off the arms. So shall we do that now? I think we should. So to complete the arms, it's really simple and you have to do this to both of them. On top of our initial rows of four yellow wool, stack another six rows of yellow wool. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And once you've done your six rows of yellow wool, you then want to do five rows of white wool. So whilst I'm here, I may as well mark it out. One, two, three, four, five. And now all you have to do is just fill in these rows 
with the necessary colours and the arms will be done, really really simple. So that's number one taken care of. And the second one, like I said, six rows of yellow, one, two, three, four, five, six, then five rows of white, one, two, three, four, five, and then you can just proceed to fill the arms in and that will be that. And once you've got the arms taken care of, we can move on to the rest of the statues. So let me first of all just show you what the front of your statue should look like once it's been completed. This is exactly what you want to have. Pauses if necessary if you're still working on any of that of course, however once you have completely taken care of the front of your statue, we now want to move on to the rest of it. So come all the way around to the back of your statue and come all the way down to the bottoms of the feet. Take out your cyan stained clay and extend each end of the back of the feet out towards the back of the statue each by three like this, one, two, three and one, two, three, as easy as that. You then want to connect each one of these third cyan stained clays together, just together like this. You want to basically copy exactly what we have on the front of the statue. You just want to do two cyan stained clay coming in from either side, and then just make the two middle blocks connecting together, just two dark gray wall. Very, very simple. And once you've done that, we can now proceed to build up the entire back of the statue, very much how we just built up the entire front of the statue. And you know what, guys? I don't think I've ever done this for a back of a statue, but here's how I'm going to do it. So we're just going to be focusing on these eight back blocks right here. And all I want you to do for the back of the statue is look directly forward at what we've done on the front and just copy it directly on the back. It should be really, really easy to do. And what I mean is just literally look at what you've done and just copy block for block what you did on the front of your statue. And there's actually nothing more to it. There's there's really no differentiation between the back of the statue and the front of the statue, except for when we get a little bit higher on the statue, but I'll point that out when it actually changes. So all I want you to do is just copy exactly what you have on the front of the statue onto the back of the statue, and you literally, just as I'm doing now, I'm not looking at my plans, just look directly forward and copy what you've done. So this next bit, is where it differs slightly. So once you completely do Homer's trousers or his pants, depending where you live in the live in the world, however you want to pronounce it, once you've done his trousers, you then, for the rest of the back of your Homer statue, you just want to do white wool. You know how Homer, you know the last few rows at the top of Homer's torso, you've kind of got like his collar and he's shown a little bit of chest and you guys might not recognize it, but this clay is actually a part of his head. Um, on the back of the statue, there's none of that. All you have to do is just completely fill the back in with white and it is as simple as that. Let me show you. So what you want to end up with is something that should look exactly like this. So like I said, you basically just want to completely copy the front of your statue until you get to his shirt, and then you just want to make his shirt completely white. It is as easy as that, guys, trust me. Once you've reached this point right here, all we have to do now to completely finish the back of the statue is do the back of the arms. And for the back of the arms, it's just the exact same sentiment, guys. All you have to do to do the back of the arms, just look directly forward at what you did for the front of the arms and just copy it. It's, it's as easy as that. It's just... It's just, it, there's there's no difficulty to it. There's, it's it. It's just painting by numbers. It's just, just look at exactly where you placed whatever blocks on the front and just transfer them to the back. And what you should end up with is something that should look exactly like this. So this is what you want to have for the back of the statue in its entirety, as easy as that. Once you've reached this point right here, and as always, pause this if necessary if you're still working on any of that, of course, we're now going to move on to the sides of the statue. So come over to this side of the statue, or honestly, on the other side as well, if you want to start on that side, they are both as easy as each other. And all you want to do for the sides of the statue is you basically just want to match 
whatever colour you have on the left and right hand side of you on the front and the back and you just want to match that colour and place it just connecting the front and the back of the statue together. So in this case, cyan clay. For the next row, light blue wool. For the next row, cyan wool. And for these next few rows, light blue wool. And it is as easy as that. You just want to match the front of the statue to the back of the statue, just like that. Really, really simple. And once you've done that for the legs, you want to do the exact same thing for the arms. Except, first of all, you just want to fill the bottom of the hands in with yellow wool, just like this. And then you want to do the exact same thing. Just match the front of the st statue to the back of the statue, just like this. And the exact same thing for the top of the shoulders. You just want to do two rows of free white wool, just coming in towards the center like that. You can do more, but you don't want to do less. And what you want to end up with is something that should look exactly like that and that is what you want to have for the first side of your home and statue really really simple once you've got that knocked out you then want to do the exact same thing all the way over on the opposite side so moving on to side number two exact same process just copy whatever color you have on the front and the back of the statue and just throw it in between it's it's as easy as that there's nothing more to say i don't really want to try and make this difficult for you guys when it is just it's easy it's really really simple so we're just at the top of the arm now we've just got to fill it in with white wool one two three and one two three like i said you have to do at least three white wool if you don't want any holes in your statue but um, you can do more, don't do any less. And as you can see, this second side, once we actually have a good view of it, the second side identical to the first side, no differentiation whatsoever, as easy as that. So once you've got that second side knocked out, all we have to do now is Homer's head, and then we've got a few details to add around the statue. So, once you've got both sides done, and the back done, and the front done, come all the way to the front of the statue, and come all the way up to the top of the torso, right here. On top of this top row of the torso, you want to take out your yellow wool, and do a row of 8 yellow wool, on top of the top row of the torso, exactly like that, just a row of 8 yellow wool. Once you've placed that first initial row, you then want to place a row of 8 light grey clay directly in front of your row of yellow, like so. You then, once you've placed that first row of clay, want to place another row directly on top of it, like so. You then want to place two rows of clay directly in front of that second row of clay. So just to show you guys a side view, it's probably a little more helpful. You want to have something which should look exactly like that. Once you've done that, you then just want to place another row of clay on top of this most outward row of clay, like so. On top of the row of clay that you've just placed, place a row of yellow wool. For the next row, place two yellow wool in the two center spots of the row, then place white wool everywhere else. For the next row, going from left to right, do one white wool, one black wool, one white wool, two yellow, one white, one black, one white. For the next row, do two yellow wool in the two center spots of the row, and then do white wool everywhere else. For the next four rows, do four solid rows of yellow wool. So that's one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four. And once you've placed those four rows of yellow wool, you've actually completed Homer's face. Of course, it's a very rough version of Homer's face, but Homer's face nonetheless. We're going to add all of the details in together, so we'll add the nose and the mouth and his, his belly and his back and everything, his ears. We'll add all of that in together. We're just going for the base shape at the moment. So once you've completely taken care of Homer's face, it's now time for us to shape the rest of his head. So now come all the way to the back of Homer's head. You're looking for this first initial row of yellow that you placed ever so slightly earlier. 
Once you've found this row of yellow, you then want to do three more rows of yellow, kind of extending back towards the back of the statue. So you just want to add three rows of yellow, just like going left towards the back of the statue, like this. On top of this back row, this third row, stack another row of yellow, just directly on top of it, like so. You then want to do a row of yellow behind that row, so like overhanging the back of the statue, like this. On top of this row of yellow that you've just placed, you want to stack three more rows of yellow, so that's one, two, three, and one, two, and three. For the next row on top of that third row of yellow, going from left to right, do one yellow, one black, one yellow, two black, one yellow, one black, one yellow. For the next row, it's actually really easy. For the next row, you basically just want to do the inverse of the pattern that you just did on the previous row. So for the next row, place black where you placed yellow, and place yellow where you placed black. Just like that. Really simple. Once you've done that, you then want to finish off the back of the head by doing four rows of yellow wool. So that's one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four. Really, really simple. So that is what you want to have for the back of Homer's head. Once you've got the front of the head and the back of the head taken care of, we can now move on to the sides of the head. So come over to this side of Homer's head. We'll start on this side, shall we? Why not? Okay, so the easiest way to do this, can you guys see this yellow wall that's placed underneath this black wall right here, kind of like on the back of the head? Place a black wall going right of that yellow wall, just underneath the black. You then, from this black wall, want to do one yellow wall going right, and then one black wall going right. You then, once you've placed those three blocks, want to go right of this black wall that's conjoined to the back of the head, and go right of this black wall with one yellow wall, one black, one yellow, then one black. And as you guys can see, that's kind of just Homer's hair right there. Really, really simple. And you know what? This is a perfect opportunity to place the ears, actually, without too much confusion. So, take out your yellow wall, and underneath, like, this bottom yellow block that we placed here, that's sandwiched in between these two blacks, place two yellow wool coming down, like so. And just kind of, like, sprouting out from those two yellow wool, just do two more yellow wool, kind of, like, coming out of the side of the head. That's Homer's ear. Once you've placed Homer's ear, to finish off the side of the head, all of the detail necessary in the side of the head, just place a single light grey clay right there just next to this light grey clay here, just right there in that position. Once you've done that, you can then just completely fill the rest of the head in with yellow, and by the rest of the head, I mean completely fill this side of the head in with yellow. We've got to add the same detail that we've added on this side onto the opposite side, but what you want to end up with is something that should look exactly like this. Pretty easy. Once you've done that, you now want to come all the way over to the opposite side of the head and you want to do the exact same thing. And the beauty of this is, of course, once you've done it on one side, it's really, really easy to do on the opposite side. You just have to copy exactly what you did on that opposite side. And if you have any trouble, just look directly over at that side and just copy it. Except for the ear, of course, underneath this middle yellow wall. Two yellow wool coming down, then two yellow wool coming out, out of the right hand side of the head like that. And also don't forget the light grey clay just placed in this corner right here. And once you've done all of that, you can then just completely fill in this side of the head in with yellow. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And once this side of the head is filled in with yellow, we're then going to do the top of the head. So this is what you want to have for the second side of the head. Very, very simple. Once you've got that taken care of, we can now move on to the top of the head, like I said. So now come all the way up to the top of Homer's head. 
What we basically want to do here, you guys can see the hole that we have at the top of Homer's head. We basically just want to plug that gap with a square shape of yellow wool that is one block higher and kind of just like it just kind of like fills the gap of the hole do you guys see what i'm talking about it's kind of difficult to say but you can see that this is the gap that we have this big square and we basically just want to fill it in one block higher than the actual gap itself so you just want to end up with this shape and once you form this shape to finish off the top of Homer's head, you just want to add in two strands of black wool for his hair. So you just want to, in not those positions because I just got that wrong, in these two positions with your black wool, you just want to place two rows of black wool in those two positions just like that. And that is just Homer's very poor comb over. And what it should look like once you've finished it to give you guys this view is something that should look exactly like this so that is what you want to have for the base shape of homer's head definitely the most difficult part of this tutorial once you've reached this point right here and again pause this if necessary if you're still working on that i can't say that enough once you've reached this point right here we're now going to add in the final details which will make this statue look a lot better so once you've reached this point you now want to first of all add in homer's nose which is in this position right here i can't really do you guys any better but you basically just want to place a two by two square of yellow wool in that position just like coming out in front of homer's face just like between his eyes and just above his mouth just like that in that position really simple once you've placed that we now want to do his mouth so his mouth is going to work like this first of all you just want to place a row of six clay kind of like in front of the first row of clay that we placed for his head can you guys see what i've done there how we've just placed that row of six clay just to give you guys a side view it should be directly in that position right there and once you've placed that first row of six clay, you then want to take this top row of the torso where we placed clay here and you just want to extend it out by one. So you just want to have those two rows of six clay just placed in those two positions right there. And once you've done that, you've actually completed Homer's head. Looking pretty good, isn't it? It, it definitely makes a little bit of a difference giving him a nose and a mouth. Definitely looks a lot better. Once you've got his head taken care of, we can now move on to his stomach. So, come all the way down to the first row of the torso, which is this row right here, in line with the bottom of the arms. What we've got to do here, first of all, is extend this first row of the torso out in front of the statue by one with your cyan, like that. Really easy. For the second row, extend it out in front of the torso by two with your cyan. For the next row, extend it out by three with your cyan. For the next three rows, you want to take out your white wool and you want to extend the next three rows of the torso out by three with your white wool. So you just want to have three rows of free white wool poking out of the front of the statue just like this. So you want to end up with something that should look like this and then it wants to taper down again so once you've got your three rows of three you then just want to do one row of two just above it so one and two and then it finally wants to taper back down to one to give you this and it will look a lot better from the side view but that is the front view so we started out with one light blue two light blue three light blue then we did three rows of three white then one row of two, then one row of one. And from the side, it's a little easier to see what we've done. You guys can see we've kind of got like a pyramid-ish shape like that. More of an Aztec temple shape, I suppose. But that is what you want to have. Kind of looks like a sideways graph, actually. But there you go. That is what you want to have on the front of your statue. Once you've got that taken care of, we want to do a, a similar thing on the back. It's similar, but a little bit different. So come to the back of the statue and starting with in line of the back of the arms again, you just want to take this row of light blue wool and just extend it out over the back by one like that. You then want to do the exact same thing with the two rows of light blue just above it. 
you then want to do the exact same thing with the next five rows of white wool. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So you want to extend out the first three light blue and then the next five white wool, just coming out of the back of the statue by one. You then want to do this, so th this is where it's kind of similar, but it's different. This this is really difficult to put into words, guys, but you want to you wanna do this with your, with your wall. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? We've basically taken the shape that we've formed by extending out the light blue and the white wall rows, and then we've kind of done the exact same shape except one row smaller. It's kind of like putting a smaller square inside of the square that we've just made, like that. And once you've got that square shape, you then want to do something, again, ever so slightly similar still, except you, you want to do, you just want to extend it out by a further row, and you kind of like want to end up with a rectangular shape, like this. Can you guys see what I've done there? I, I hope that you guys can see it. I mean, that is exactly what you want to do to the back. We don't have to do any more to it, but can you guys see what we've done? We start off with the square. Then we did the smaller square, and then we've got the four rows like kind of poking out of, a, of the smaller square. We've got the four middle rows kind of like poking out. Is that easier to see from a side view? I don't think I can do it any simpler, but that is what you want to have for the back. And of course, pause the video anywhere if you have to do that, but just to give you guys a complete side view of Homer, there you go. It's kind of, like I said, similar but different. I don't know why it's different, guys. I... What do I know? I didn't design that. Well, I suppose I did design the statue, but I didn't design the skin. But that is what you want to have. And once you finish that, you should actually end up with a 100% fully completed Homer statue. It's looking pretty nice, isn't it? I, I used to think this statue was creepy. I really did. I even expressed that. I showed you guys this a little while ago in my creative world. Um, link in the description for my Creative World Tour if you want to see it. I actually thought it was a little creepy, but upon further inspection, it's kind of a cool statue, isn't it? It's really different, very well designed, actually. And again, this, this is not really me. I, I, I just copied the skin, um, which I didn't create, obviously, but... You know, once you've once you've completely finished your home and statue and the back part of that statue that's kind of like... <laughs> it's kind of just poking out. It's kind of weird, isn't it? At certain angles, this statue looks really weird, but it, it comes together nicely. Um, once you've finished it, you want to end up with something that should look exactly like this, and it's, it's a pretty nice-looking statue. I'll be doing the whole Simpsons family, guys. I can't just do Homer. Now that I've opened up the floodgates with Homer, next I'll just be doing them in order. So, I'll basically be doing this. I'll, uh, where's the skin pack so we can look at all of them? I've done Homer, then I'll be doing Marge then Bart, then Lisa, then Maggie, and then I probably won't be doing any more Simpsons statues, but um, I'll try and get them all out in a decent timely fashion, because they're not so difficult to make, they're kind of simple, but they do have complicated elements, but there's the Homer statue, guys. Hopefully you managed to make this no problem. I tried to make this as easy as possible, as followable as possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video, and of course, if you could like, share, favorite, comment, all of that stuff, it would help me out tremendously. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.